Hi guys, Mac here again. So today, a very simple video for you. I'm going to take you through the process of setting up a Windows 10 machine in Parallels Desktop 16. In addition to that, I'm going to show you some of the customizations I normally apply just to make the Windows 10 environment a little bit easier to use. Now to start off with, we are going to need a copy of Windows 10. The simplest place to get that is just to download it directly from Microsoft. So we'll do that here. I'll put a link to this website in the description down below. I'm going to select the May 2020 update because that's the latest one here. I'm going to choose English and I'm going to download the 64-bit version and you can see it downloading there. Fortunately, this won't take very long, so let's let this finish and then we'll continue with setting up our Windows 10 machine. Okay, that's all finished. It didn't take too long. We should find the ISO in my downloads folder now. Yep, there it is. So what we're going to do from the control center within Parallels Desktop 16, we're going to go File, New, and it will display the wizard for creating a new machine. I'm going to go with that one, the Install Windows or another OS from a DVD or image file. So select that one, we'll click Next. Now it should find the ISO that we've just downloaded. If it doesn't, click the Choose Manually and you should be able to go and find it. We're going to let the wizard build our machine because this is just an intro tutorial as to how to get started. At the end of this, I will take you through some of the things that I normally customize around the machine. So if you jump to this time code here, I'll take you through those customizations if you're interested. So I'm going to click continue. Now, I'm not going to enter a Windows license key for this because I want to be able to use this as an image for creating lots of other Windows 10 machines. You can if you wish, in which case it will go and try and auto activate the machine for you. Now, because I haven't entered a license key, it's going to ask me the version of Windows that I want. If you enter the key, it should automatically select it for you. I'm going to go with Windows 10 Pro because that's what the licenses are that I have. And here we're going to select the primary use for the machine. Now, what this does is it modifies the allocation of cores, RAM and various different settings within the machine to try and optimize it for the environment that you suggest. There are several different versions in here, but just for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to stay with the productivity option there at the top. If we click continue, we're now asked to give it a name. I have a, a naming convention that I tend to use for my machine, so I'm just going to enter it in there. You, of course, can call this whatever you want. Now, I'm just going to go straight to the Create button now. This should now go and set up our Windows 10 machine. So let's let this run, and we'll come back to it at the end. And there we go, we're all done. It is joyously easy to do. So let's click continue. And here we are with our Windows 10 machine. Now it's kind of jumped into a large setup. So let's just get rid of our Explorer there. So we're still running in a window here. I just shrink it a little bit, you can see it. So let's have a look at the spec of this machine. If we fire up Task Manager and a performance, you'll see that it's got the two virtual cores that we allocated and also got our four gig of RAM allocated. So that's all there is to setting up a Windows 10 machine under Parallels Desktop 16. It is remarkably easy to achieve and also really, really functional on a decent Mac machine. If we fire up Explorer, you can see all these folders are automatically shared for us. So we can go and have a look at the desktop, for example. Now that's the desktop also shared with the Mac. And you can also see some of the other drives that I, I have configured on my Mac as well. So like I said, it's a real simple process. So what I thought we'd do now is perhaps move on. Now I'll, I'll show you some of the customizations that I normally do to my standard Windows 10 machine on Parallels just to make it a little bit more usable. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, is change the machine name. So if we fire up Explorer, right click on this PC and click Properties, you'll see that this machine has a random name assigned. So I want to give it a reasonable name. So I'm just going to hit Change Settings. I'm going to hit Change and I'm just going to give it a reasonable name. I'm just going to call this Win 10 Demo. Now it's going to say we have to restart. I'm going to say restart later for now. There's one other quick customization I want to show you and that is the behavior of the quick access menu. I'm going to hit start and go into File Explorer Options. Can you see there the option there to show recently used files in quick access and show frequently used folders in quick access? I tend to turn those off. I want my quick access bar just to be for documents I want to use all the time. So the next thing we're going to do is actually have a look at the configuration of the machine within Parallels itself. Now to do that, I'm going to shut the machine down. So let me do that. We'll just power it off. Now again, bear in mind these are customizations that I normally make 
really just to make the machine work a little bit better in my environment. Your experience or, or your requirements for that customization may be slightly different, but I'll show you mine anyway. So you can see my machine at the bottom there, the Windows 10 X64 that we've just built. I'm going to click the little cog there so we can get the configuration of the machine. And I'm going to take you through the common things that I change. So the first one is going to be reclaim disk space on shutdown. I select that. So as that drive within the virtual machine fills up and empties as you delete things, what I want it to happen is for all that space to be cleared up when I close that machine down. So that, that's a great option to have selected. Next, let's go through the menus up here and I'll show you what I typically change. Firstly, under options, you'll see that pause windows after 30 seconds is selected. I just find that irritating, so I'm going to turn that off. Secondly, if you look at the custom options here for the startup and shutdown, you can control the view of the machine when it starts and shuts down. So I'm going to say the startup view is always a window. And when I shut the VM down, it always closes that window. You may want a slightly different behavior. Things like optimization, I don't tend to change. I tend to leave it at no limit. And if we now have a look at the sharing, because I do tend to change some things in here. For a start, you'll see that I'm sharing cloud folders with Windows. I don't typically want that to happen. And I also want to remove the Mac volumes to Windows. So I get rid of that. Now, in terms of custom folders, this is a custom share from the Mac itself into that Windows virtual machine. What I tend to do is to share my Mac OS home folder. So I'm going to do that. Now, in terms of share Mac user folders with Windows, I tend to leave this alone. What this will do is actually give you the desktop within Windows will be the same as the one that you use on the Mac. So if you copy something to the desktop on the Mac, it will also appear in your Windows desktop as well. Same for all of these folders here. So I don't tend to change those. So we'll leave those as is. Next, I want to have a look at the applications. Now, again, your requirements may be different. So I'm customizing this for how I like my Windows 10 machine to behave. For a start, I want to turn off that doc icons bounce. Also, I'm going to turn off the option to share Mac applications with Windows. Now, the reason I do that is because I find sometimes that I accidentally open a document or a, a file in the wrong app, and I don't like that. If I'm in my Windows 10 environment, I want my stuff to open within Windows 10, not within my Mac. So again, your requirements may change, but that is how I like to use the machine. Anything else in here? Well, there's nothing else in here that I tend to change. So now let's have a look at the hardware. Now within here, what we're doing is we're configuring what the machine looks like to Windows 10. So by default, it's got two cores allocated and four gig of RAM. Now I do tend to up the cores slightly. Now this will depend on what machine you're running and also what the purpose of this virtual machine is for. So for me, I tend to use my Windows 10 environment specific for things like Office and maybe the odd bit of admin tool for Office 365. So I typically find that four cores is plenty. What I do tend to do though is up the memory slightly. So I'm gonna set that up to six gig of RAM. Now, bear in mind your machine might not have as much memory as, as this one does. This is a 64 gig iMac Pro. So just choose a reasonable amount there. Chances are if you're just using Office, you can leave that to four gig and you will be absolutely fine. Now, same for things like graphics. I tend to leave these by default. The only other option I tend to change in here is around network. So by default, the wizard tends to configure shared networking, which is effectively a NAT configuration. So your machine is actually hidden behind the IP address of your Mac that you're using. What I tend to do is I change this from shared networking to my default adapter. Now, what will happen here is the virtual machine will pick up its own IP address using your DHCP server on the network. So that is pretty much all I tend to change in here. Let's have a look at security. Again, there's nothing I tend to do in here that is particularly relevant. I tend to leave this as default. Backup is quite interesting. SmartGuard, I do tend to use for my main Windows 10 machine. Now what SmartGuard does is it takes a snapshot of the machine at regular intervals. If we click on details here, you'll see what the options are. By default, it will take a snapshot every 24 hours and it will keep three of those snapshots. And you'll see there that you can restore back for one daily, one weekly, and one monthly snapshot. I do leave the notification on because sometimes I'm doing something. I could be in a, a Teams meeting or, or something like that within my virtual machine. So I don't want it taking a snapshot while I'm doing that. So if you leave the notification on, you'll get a little pop-up asking you if it's okay. And if I am doing something where I don't want to be interrupted, I just say no, and it carries on as before. So that's pretty much the only modifications I tend to make. Let's get that machine fired up again. There we go, we have our Windows 10 machine. If we pop into Task Manager again, 
we should see that we've now got our four cores and the additional memory. There we go, four cores and six gig of RAM. So that was a very basic setup of a Windows 10 machine. That's how I tend to use them. It is very, very simple to do and really workable. So I hope you found that useful. Now, any questions about it, just drop me a comment down below and I will try and answer them for you. But getting started with Parallels Desktop is, it couldn't be simpler. It's a great product and it works really well.